Hi guys, uh, my name is Tom Antos and I'm here with Michelle from HD Video Shop. Yeah, hi, thanks for having me. Uh, and he's brought the latest uh, from Kinefinity, it's the Kinemax uh, 6K camera. So it's the new new 6K beast on the market and we're going to test that out today and uh, hopefully answer all, all of your questions. Uh, Kinemax is one of the few cameras on the market that can shoot in 6K resolution. Uh, that's actually nine times the resolution of standard HD. Beat that 4K. Uh, now this video is actually in 4K and that's because of uh, YouTube restrictions and also because my computer couldn't really handle editing the footage in, in native 6K. So you might be wondering what's the point of shooting in 6K when most of the world still watches HD video uh, and now you know slowly we're moving on to 4K. Well, it's the same reason as when we first started to switch to 4K cameras. Higher resolution means that you can get an even more detailed image when you scale it down to HD uh, without all the moire uh, artifacts and also it should make the noise less visible since now the pixels are much smaller. Uh, what you're watching here is a test I did with this camera to see how well it performed in an extreme outdoor lighting situation. Uh, I had the girl start off in the bright sunlight and then as she enters, uh, you know, she walks towards the bridge and she enters under the bridge uh, where there is a difference of about 4 f-steps in exposure. And this really allows you to see just how well the camera can handle both the highlights and the extreme shadows all in one shot. Uh, I did not adjust the exposure uh, as I went on under the bridge in any of the shots. Uh, as you can see the section where she is in the sun uh, looks great but even when she is 4 steps underexposed in these shots uh, there is still some detail retained in the shadows without uh, excessive noise. Uh, this is how the footage looks in its native uh, uh, kinolog or, or cineform raw. Once you apply the lookup table and then slight color correction, then the noise might be a bit more visible or, or less. Uh, it really depends on how you grade the footage and adjust the exposure. Uh, this camera shoots in Kinera and also the industry standard Cinema DNG. Both are a lossless codex, which is a great thing for quality. Uh, the problem is uh, that you can't really directly edit the footage, not unless you have a, like a supercomputer. So really, most people, like myself, will have to transcode the footage once they connect uh, the hard drive to the computer. Now this sucks because it just simply takes time. A good thing is that Kinefinity provides you with the Kinestation software that makes the transcoding super easy. There's not too many settings to mess with and it just simply converts the files to Cineform RAW codec. It's a compressed format that honestly works great on most editing machines and with all the popular editing software. Uh, the recording media this camera uses are standard SSDs or solid state drives uh, that you can buy for your laptop. They're, they're great because they're cheap. Now uh, I did run into a problem when using my SSD that I use with my Blackmagic Cinema 4K camera. It, it never failed me there, uh, but while shooting with the Kinemax 6K, the hard drive would sometimes have problems keeping up with the uh, high data rates. Uh, which resulted in a footage that looks like this. Uh, now the bad thing is that while recording, I did not get a warning that there was anything wrong. It wasn't until I hit playback on the camera to check the shots that I realized this problem existed. Uh, now that's when I was filming in, in 2K uh, slow motion mode. Uh, when I switched to 6K mode, uh, that's when the camera would just stop recording after a few seconds if it couldn't handle the, the high data rate. Uh, not, not all the time, but just in some cases. This was really more of a problem uh, towards the end of the day, once the SSD was uh, more than halfway full. And okay, action. Okay, and okay, action. And let's try it again. Let's go. I did like three times and three times in a row, it just stopped. Like if I'm walking. Let's see. Okay, action, you're walking. Beautiful. Uh, that's when I decided to switch to the Kinefinity's proprietary uh, SSDs. Uh, those of course are more expensive, but with those drives the, the problem seemed to go away. Now is this a low light camera? <laughs> well, it's not if you're trying to compare it to the Sony a7s for example. 
uh, but comparing it to most other digital film cameras or, or even the DSLRs, it does a pretty good job shooting in low light. Uh, here we were in pretty much complete darkness uh, unless we were around one of these old street lamps. And, and even then, I, mean, I, I had a hard time finding the, the right lens or some accessories in my camera bag. Yet, as you can see, the camera performs very well. These shots are lit with just the street lamps uh, that were there. Uh, even when going to ISO 3200, uh, the image looks really clean and it captures a lot of detail in the dark areas that were not really lit by the street lamps. Uh, now just for this test, uh, I even got this shot uh, in ISO 6400. And as you can see, the image is still great. There is obviously a little bit more noise visible, but that's normal. You know, any other camera will increase the noise as you go up higher in, in ISO. Uh, still, even in this really high ISO setting, uh, the noise is really only visible in, in the parts that are pretty much completely black. Uh, yet I managed to get a, a decent exposure uh, using just these two street lamps. Now would I really shoot like this for a film or music video? N no, uh, you know, j just because your camera can see into the darkness uh, doesn't mean you, you shouldn't light your shots. It goes the same thing if you're using, for example, the Low Light King, which is the Sony A7S. Now here is the same shot after I lit it with just two small LED lights. And as you can see, you know, the, the image looks really clean and also just the shots look more interesting once you actually light it and add some definition to the, 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 you know, the, the girl's face. Now as far as the rolling shutter, it's about the same as most other CMOS sensor cameras like the Red Epic. It, it's there if you do just the straight pans uh, across a lot, a lot of vertical lines like here. But it's not really visible in most situations where you might be, for example, hand holding the camera and shaking it. Now the same amount of rolling shutter is visible in both 6K and in 2K and, and any other you know settings in between. And the same thing goes for slow motion. Uh, now the camera offers internal 6K and 4K with around 13 stops of latitude based on my tests, uh, which are not studio chart tests because I just hate doing those. Uh, I usually prefer to test all the cameras in real world scenarios. Uh, the camera also shoots in what is known as golden 3K and, and 2K and, and 1080p, uh, which increases the latitude to 16 f-stops, uh, or at least that's what I've been told. Uh, th to be honest, uh, it's not something that you'll notice in most situations. Uh, the latitude and 6K resolution look just as good as the same shots I got in, in 2K. So if you're wondering about the quality, I can honestly say that this camera rocks. Uh, it's got a great dynamic range, amazing resolution even in 1080p, uh, here's a few comparisons of the same shot, just in different resolution modes I shot. Uh, now, when I was testing out this camera, which was almost two months ago, the camera had a very early firmware, which meant that when recording in 2K, instead of using the full frame sensor, which is a super 35mm sensor, or something similar in size to an APS-C size sensor, uh, the camera would actually crop in to get the different resolutions, uh, as you can see here. And because the sequence I shot with the girl under the bridge was all slow motion, which at the time was limited to, to, to only 2K recording, it meant that all those shots were done in a crop sensor mode, which was similar to a super 16mm uh, uh, film sensor. It's not ideal, as it meant that I had to use uh, uh, pretty much all short focal lengths, which made it uh, extra hard to get shallow depth of field. Uh, now that's not the case when recording in 6K. Uh, overall, this camera feels just like using the Red Epic. It's similar in size and weight, and uh, you know, it's definitely not a light and portable DSLR, but then again, it's not as heavy as the Blackmagic Ursa Elephant. Uh, the camera has different lens mounts that, that can change easily. Uh, I use the Canon EF and Canon EF mount uh, with a focal reducer, which effectively changed the Super 35mm image sensor to a full-frame camera when shooting in 6K. Uh, both of those lens mounts are, are produced by Kinefinity. Uh, overall, I like this camera. I, I w wasn't yet ready for prime time at the time that I, I used it, uh, as the firmware was in beta version. Uh, but I have since been told that the latest firmware has fixed the issues that I encountered with the hard drives, and now also you, you can shoot in a 2K and an HD without having to crop it on the sensor. Uh, some of the planned future firmware improvements that are coming later on in 2015 is 4K high slow motion at 100 frames per second, and also Apple ProRes recording. If that will actually come or not, and just how well it's going to work, I can't tell you since uh, I don't you know, actually own the camera. Now, Kinemax also supports custom LUTs that you can upload uh, for live view. It has proper XLR inputs for audio. Uh, it records in 12-bit color space, RAW, uh, 444, which uh, if you don't know what that means, it's basically able to record all the color and detail information you will ever need. Uh, perhaps the most amazing thing about this camera is the price. You can get the camera body for just 8,000, 
uh, the US dollars and the entry bundle which includes the, the battery plate, Kinefinity, custom SSDs uh, plus a hand grip is just 9,000 USD. Uh, the professional kit which includes everything is uh, 13,000. Now that's a lot more affordable than a Red Epic for example. Uh, I think that's really what the biggest difference is between this camera and some of the other top of the line cinema cameras. You know, each camera is slightly different, so you can't really compare them all. Uh, but one thing that sets the professional cameras apart from, let's say, a cheaper ENG or, or indie filmmaker sort of DSLR style cameras is really the price. Uh, the, the basic Red Epic kit that allows you to shoot is around $30,000. And the full kit can cost uh, over 60000 So if Kinefinity can deliver on all the promises with future firmware release, then I, I think this camera will open up the world of professional cinema tools uh, to indie and low-budget filmmakers. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, this quick test. Uh, you know, hopefully it answered all of your questions about the camera. Now, if you have more questions, as always, you can visit my website uh, or... You can contact me and my team at contact at kinefinity.tv. Thank you guys and I'll see you next time.